Uh, this is a plant, you folks online, got that? Humic, this is uh, humic acid for you organic gardeners, you know what humic acid is. Just a quick example, you take a compost pile, you compost it down to its last element, that's humic acid. It's a natural organic product. I think if you've got any stressed plants at all, anything that's got burnt tips, it looks like it's been uh, heat stressed, you've got to get that thing to root deeper, root stronger, root out farther. What this does, you spread it on the ground and it feeds the soil, not the plant. It feeds the soil, like the mycorrhizals, the, the fungi, the, the beneficials, the worms. It helps feed them so they go, oh, look, this soil is active and alive. This is great. It's lots of humic acid. Let's start. And then the, the, uh, the plants respond by going, wow, look, the soil's alive. Things are going on. I think I'll root more because the soil, I want to be in, I want to be part of the party. So it encourages deeper roots on the plants. This is one I'm going to push real heavy on the radio show. This next week or two, taking advantage of the rain. I think if you've got any evergreens, native or otherwise, put this on. Take advantage of the water. If you've got any, uh, 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 a fruit tree, anything that's got brown on it, put this on right away. Because it will make, take advantage of the rain. It will help that plant recover, come out of the stress, and roots deeper, make it more drought hardy. So it's a really... I don't talk about it enough, really, but this year the stress is so heavy on plants. I think I'm going to push this for for a few weeks. See if I can't get my customer, my friends, to, to do this so their gardens are healthier. You keep your plants healthier; they're more fire wise. If they're deeper rooted, you can take in more moisture. They're going to be able to repel that fire better. The bark is going to be thicker. Uh, it, can, it can just it'll be a more robust plant. In the back, is there something? Yes. That's a good question. Yeah, okay. This is a granular product. It's kind of like chocolate. It's like mocha. So make sure you wear gloves because it's kind of dirty. It's, a dirt, it's an organic product. So I put it in my handheld spreader. I just spread around the drip line of the plants. So that so the drip line is, let's say I'm the trunk of a ponderosa pine. The branch is going out this way. That is the drip line. I'll try to focus halfway out the drip line to the tips because that's where all the feeder roots are that they can take it all up. Uh, at the base of the plant, don't even bother. It's not worth it. All that's at that base are anchoring roots. And those roots are very thick, very large. The bark is so thick on those that the plant can't absorb it through that. And so you're, you're wasting your energy and time. Put it out at the drip line. Foods or the humic, that kind of stuff. Yes? If your drip line is out over your rock lawn, do you have to scrape away the rocks oh. to get to Good question, yes. Okay, so the question was for you folks online, uh, do I need to scrape the rock back to, to put this stuff down? No. So the way I do this, I'm the laziest gardener ever. I don't, I love gardens. The process of gardening, I don't like that as much. I love setting up irrigation. I love killing bugs. I love killing weeds. I don't like the actual gardening part. It's work. Uh, what I do is I just chuck it on, I walk away, and I go. That's it. Unless you've got plastic underneath that rock, then it will light, go through the rock, hit the plastic, and it, will, it won't go into the soil. Most of us are using uh, fabrics, a weed fabric, a woven material, where that, that stuff will go through the rock, go through the fabric, and go down the soil. If you've got that, you're golden. Chuck it on and go. If you're a true hardcore gardener, and you, have, you like gardening, go ahead, rake it, hoe it, turn it in if you want, but it won't make any difference whatsoever. They'll make you feel healthier, stronger, like you bonded with the earth. Me, you want to chuck it on and walk away and go do something else. Yes? So when you're doing that, how often would you do that? Right now, I do it once a year in the summer because it's so stressed. Every plant, no matter what it is, is going to benefit from deeper roots especially new things or anything stressed. So that's when I, I use it in June, July. Up in front. Yeah, no question. Your turn. Uh, real quick, Mike. Uh, on your plant food around roses, I've got bark around mine. Right? Same thing, you just spread a little bark, won't have to rake it all the way? Nope, don't have to. So he's got bark. So these are water-soluble products. Uh, so the, the rain or irrigation will hit it. It will go in and dissipate, go into the soil. 
Don't even think in terms of, I, I don't even think in terms of drip irrigation. Where are the emitters? I want to put the food around that. Your irrigation matters not. Think in terms of the plant and the plant health and where the drip line is. Don't even focus on drip. The drip might release some of it. What you're really setting the stage for is rain. That's why this event, this rainstorm, is such an opportunity. Plants are stressed. I, I can't emphasize it enough. This is great stuff to get on the next day or two while the soil is still moist. So it'll, it'll, it'll break down and get into the soil and make a difference in the plants. It'll make them healthy. Call it up, uh, the new plant. A new plant, so how long before I plant it is it considered established? Two growing seasons. That's, that's the book, that's the book. Season one, it starts to form roots into the surrounding, that root ball. Season two, it actually extends out into the, into the landscape, and then you're established. It's considered established, so two years. Two growing <laughs> seasons, which would be two springs, basically. Makes sense? Good questions, tremendous. What else? Can you use that in containers? You know, can you use this in containers? I would say no, only because the, it says yes, but my name's Ken, we're friends. <laughs> we're just talking over the fence, going in. This is, I made a mistake with mine. Uh, I put too much, because I'm a gardener, and I'm an American. I mean, generosity, I like the 40 cents and supersize it. Uh, I find I use too much, but what it does, it lowers the pH which is a benefit. Yeah. I think I lowered the pH too much with the potting soil I was using, and I burned the plant. <coughs> so I use it mainly in my raised beds, out in the landscape, but I don't use it in my actual containers myself. Just, it says you can, but I don't know, I'd, I'd encourage you, maybe not. Just personal experience. Yeah, good question. Okay.